Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Hey, I just want to thank everybody who participated last week in our new fan feature photos. Uh, sending me pictures of yourself with uh, a mug or a hat or a shirt or whatever. Um, so remember you can do that. If you have uh, some Dan's Grand Valley merchandise, go ahead and send it over. Uh, the email address is dansgrandvalley at gmail.com. I'll have that in the description below. I also want to thank uh, Bill and Judy S. Uh, from Loveland, Colorado, again, for uh, coming over and visiting and uh, giving us a really cool interview. Uh, if you missed that by chance, it was last week's video. Go back and view. Uh, it's really amazing the stuff that Bill did inside of the mountain. If you remember, I did the winter scene module in there. Bill took it to a whole other level and built a train yard in there, uh, which is really super cool. So I, I encourage you to go back, if you missed it, and watch last week's video um, where Bill and Judy um, explain... <laughs> where they're at with the Grand Valley layout kit and that really cool stuff that they did inside the building, or I mean inside the uh, mountain. Uh, very cool. So this week, uh, what I want to address is an issue that one of my fans uh, emailed me about, and uh, that is sometimes, and it happens a lot on the Grand Valley layout, is sometimes these locomotives like this one with that coupler there, coupler in the back, they get hung up on things like uh, it happens mostly on the Grand Valley at the 90 degree and the 60 degree cross. So let me show you what I mean. So this can happen with uh, locomotives and any kind of rail cars. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a locomotive. It has happened with uh, several of mine. But you've got a, a rail car or a loco that's come along just fine. It's going forward uh, special uh, or a certain part of the track. It's doing just fine. You get to this cross and it has no issue at all. Crosses it, no problem, right? But then I'm, you're running your loco the opposite way in reverse and you come to the same area of the track, the same cross or whatever it is, but this time the locomotive stops. It gets hung up. All right, let me shut it down and let's take a look what's going on. So, so what's happening here? What's causing it to stop? Well, you can see that little tube hanging down from the coupler that's hitting the track. There's some slop in these couplers and when it hangs down, hits the track, if you're going the other way, it'll breeze right over it. Not a problem, but if you're going this way, it's a problem. So how do we fix that? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's go over to the bench and I'll show you. All right, over here on the bench. So there's a couple of tools you're gonna need depending on what you're gonna do. Uh, probably the most simple way to deal with it is you're going to need a small set of wire snippers here, diagonal cutters. And what you're going to do is just simply cut this off or trim it back and your problem will be eliminated. If you don't want to do that, you want it to still be there, you're going to have to bend it up slightly to get it out of the way. Let me show you how I do that. So what you need to bend it up with is a pair of needle nose pliers like these, or uh, some like these are a little more stout, but I prefer these, they're a little more uh, precise. You can get in there a little easier. And you want a good pair. These are craftsmen. Uh, you want a good pair. You don't want some that are cheap from the dollar store that are gonna bend when, you, when you're trying to, to do that, so. Uh, so what you do is now you want to support the coupler with your finger so that you're going to be bending this upward. You do not want this, 
to not be supported and to bend up and do some damage to the draft box or the step or anything that you might have here. So you wanna hold it down with your finger, grab the coupler. I like to use some where about the middle part of the needle nose like this. And then I just do a little tiny tweak like that. So now you can see it's not the same sweeping curve. It's just been just tweaked up, bent upward just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing to the front because I've noticed that it's giving me issues sometimes, not all the time. So I'm just going to try to keep this on camera here. And sorry, it's a little high for me. And I'm just going to roll the needle nose a little bit as I support that. And now you can see that is bent upward a little bit more. So let's go take it back over to the layout and try it. See if it'll clear going both ways. Okay, first I'm going through forward. It wasn't a problem before. I don't anticipate it to be a problem now. But just to be sure, it cleared just fine. So let's back it up and we'll go through backwards and see if we solve the issue. Okay, I've turned it around. I've got it going back to the cross. So let's see what happens. All right, it cleared. So of course, if it wouldn't have cleared, you can always go back and bend it up a little bit more or even cut it off if it's just a consistent problem. But uh, that should solve your issue. It doesn't take much. And I kind of like the look of those tubes hanging down, they're supposed to mimic the hoses that uh, hang off the couplers. So I kind of like having them there. I have cut them off in the past and uh, you know, that's okay too. But uh, I kind of like the way they look. So I keep them, uh, I keep them there. Okay, so since we're talking about coupler height, and I know we're talking about it on locomotives, but it's very important on all of your rail cars as well. You want your couplers to all be consistent so that they will line up and you won't have uncoupling incidents. What'll happen is if they're off by like, if they look like this, or like this, when you hit uneven track and you go over a bump like the crosses on <laughs> the Grand Valley, sometimes those will cause your train cars to actually lift up on this little plastic frog. I will reference a video right here of how to deal with that. That's a different subject, but let's get back to coupler height. The way that you ensure that your couplers are all a consistent height is picking up one of these KD, let me uh, focus in here, one of these KD number 206 insulated multi-purpose coupler height gauge. That's fancy word for a hunk of plastic that you can mount a coupler to and you can adjust it for the height that you want by adjusting this screw and once you have it set for the height of your couplers that you use, like this, now you can bring your other cars along or your locomotives and hook them up and make sure that they're the same height. Now, if they're not, let's say you have one that's too high or too low. Let's say a very common one is on some of the uh, cabooses and different uh, uh, gondola cars, like coal cars, sometimes they're a little bit low. So if the thing is low like this, what you'll have to do is remove the trucks and you'll have to use either a fiber washer or a plastic spacer, sometimes even a metal washer or a nut uh, like I have here, a small little nut or even a plastic spacer that you might find that will essentially raise the trucks. So if you 
put more of a gap between the trucks, it's obviously going to raise the height of the coupler. If the coupler is mounted to the body of the car. If <laughs> it's not, if it's connected to the trucks, then it's going to stay the height of the trucks and the body will lift. So you have to pay attention to that if you have that type of coupler. So I definitely recommend getting one of these height gauges so you can check your cars, check the height of your couplers. That will help you avoid a lot of uncoupling incidents and issues if you have an area of your track that is uneven or even sometimes just going over frogs and switches that uh, can raise the cars up a little bit. Having a consistent coupler height will help alleviate those issues. All right, guys. Well, that's all I'm going to cover in this week's video. It's going to be kind of a short one, but uh, I just wanted to remind you guys, send me your photos. I'm going to have the uh, brand new fan feature photos. So anytime uh, I get some new photos, whether it's of you with your merchandise or if you have some progress uh, pictures of your layout, your Grand Valley, uh, whatever you'd like, or you want to share a new locomotive that you got or a new car, send it to me to dansgrandvalley at gmail.com and we'll feature them right here on Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. And, uh, you know, that'll be a way to, uh, to share your progress with everybody and uh, what you've got going on. So uh, be sure to do that. You can also help out the channel by buying merchandise or doing super thanks uh, if you feel so inclined. That'll help us move forward uh, with some funding to uh, hopefully get some new locos, some new power, some new uh, cars, and some more interesting content for you guys. So you guys do that. I really appreciate it. Well, that's all we have time for this time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the next video. We'll have that coming up for you real soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to tell your friends, like, share. That helps grow the channel. And uh, subscribing uh, really does help. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you next video.